All right, hey, I'm Pastor James, and I'm here to just to help celebrate 2016. We saw God do some great things in the life of the church, and we want to share that. I'm proud to be your pastor. I'm proud to help lead this church. I'm proud to know you and your families, be able to walk this journey of the Christian faith with you. we got several people that are just going to give you a taste of the way they've seen God at work in the church and in their lives, and we're here to celebrate that, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, my name is Lynn Norrington, um, new resident in Douglasville, moved here in 2015, um, went to a church in Charleston for um, the last 38 years of my life, so I knew when I got here I would need a new church, and um, joined the Woody Fight Senior Center, and met there a member of First Presbyterian, her name is Sandra Burroughs. Just in talking there one day, I, she over heard me say I was going to be uh, looking for a new church and she invited me to come here and the service that we went to together was the 1045 service and it was the youth day service and um, I was very very impressed in that service with the uh, power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in in that service in every one of those I believe about 35 or so young people. Um, uh, I have been around youth ministry before and um, that level um, of participation and commitment in young people was most unusual. So I noticed in the bulletin that a contemporary service was starting, uh, maybe a new location, a new time in July. And so I marked on my calendar to come back for that. Just kept coming back, uh, dipping my feet in the water, so to speak, uh, to be sure that uh, this was where the Lord would plant me. And so I have seen him at work here. I've been on a few boomer trips. <laughs> I've been to the Thursday morning uh, Romans Bible study. And I've just, I just felt a very warm reception here. And so this is the way I've seen God working here at First Presbyterian, um, bringing in new people and doing new things. God's always doing new things. Hi, my name is Rissa Rogers. I'm 19 and I go to West Georgia Technical College. About a year ago, I went through a pretty bad breakup and I was feeling really distant at the church that I was going to. So I decided that something had to change. And one of my professors at school invited me to come to the Gap here at church. That's what it was. Now it's the 20-somethings group. Um, I came and I was a little reluctant just because I don't like going and meeting new people. But I came and I loved it. Um, I could just tell that the presence of God was in this church and that this was where I was supposed to be. So I've been coming ever since, and that was, like I said, a year ago. Um, I've seen God working in my life and in this church, specifically by the connections that I've made. Like I said, I was going through a really rough time, and I felt like I didn't really have anybody around me. And at this church, I was able to meet people who were my age and in college, going through the same things that I was, and I was also able to meet women in the flourish that I could connect with as well. So that, has, that is how I have seen God working in 2016 in my life. Hi, I'm Bobette Simister. I'm gonna talk a little bit about, about a year ago when James, our pastor, started talking about the intergenerational worship. I think it's a great idea. It's how I grew up, um, worshiping with my grandmother in the sanctuary. So I thought, that's a great idea. On the other hand, I went, wow. Because on Sundays, I have five of my grandchildren that attend worship with me. Four of those qualifying to come to the service with me. I thought, well, this is a great idea, but how am I gonna manage this? And so Sunday after Sunday, we continued to come. Um, I'm not going to say that at some Sundays I was not a little concerned because the grandson may be moving around a little too much or the granddaughters were talking and I'm trying to keep them quiet. 
Sometimes I would apologize to those around me. I'm sorry, just give them a few minutes. But I want to tell you that those around me absolutely were just fantastic. The rake straws would say to me, don't worry, they are wonderful. Um, and they're okay, just, just let them be who they are. There was a Sunday when I was sitting on the very end and I had four of my grandchildren there with me. And as I looked to the right of me, my oldest granddaughter, Alyssa, was praising and worshiping God. And the other three, a couple of them too young to really read all the words, but were singing praises. And my heart was filled with such joy that I really could barely contain myself. And I was so thankful that I had the opportunity to have my grandchildren here every Sunday worshiping and praising God and be encouraged by all of those around us. And so for me, this has been last year when we started a beautiful year and I look forward to those grandchildren. Nothing is more important to me than for them to grow up in the faith and being nurtured and loved by all the other church members here at this church. I'm Susan McGaha and I've been a member of the church for 18 years. So last year, uh, as a member of the local missions committee, I kept hearing about this Kentucky trip. And this, this uh, mission trip is, is in coordination with the Christian Appalachian Project and we help people just have better quality of life and just do uh, construction projects. So it kept pulling on my chain as I heard it being ramped up. Uh, so I signed up and I was so excited about it. And as time got closer, I realized I was the only woman on the trip and I didn't know the people on the trip. I knew a few of them a little bit. And I was getting a little apprehensive. You know, I've never done these uh, skill saws and things. And so yeah, I was apprehensive. We got there, everything was fine. It was organized, the people were wonderful. I um, mean, we arrive on site and we have these two nice girls that are leading us and I'm like, okay, are they gonna let me help? And uh, as, uh, as God always does his work, uh, one of the men uh, shared with the other men and said, come on y'all, we gotta let Susan help. We gotta keep her involved. Well, this family was amazing. We were helping a, a young man who was very, very sick and uh, just giving him a quality of life, building a ramp so he could get from one trailer to the next. And the mother, Ruby, uh, here her son is on his last days and, and she and I connected and her spirit was just so touching. And she gave me a book, a devotional book for women and, and it's opened up to a special page, Divine Connection. And she gave this to me. I may never see her again. I don't know if her son John is still alive, but my heart exploded on that trip. I was out of my comfort zone and he carried me through. Every day I'd get a little less nervous, a little less nervous, and then it was time to go. But it was a wonderful experience and yes, God's presence is everywhere. Uh, my name is Tom Stavner. I've, we've been uh, members of First Presbyterian Church for about 30 years. I'm here today to talk about the Stephen Ministry. And this is a ministry, a one-on-one -on -one ministry, uh, where people, usually lay people, uh, walk with others that are hurting because of physical illness or divorce or death or whatever it is. Uh, they walk beside you as, as you go through that journey. Uh, what brought me to uh, to be a benefactor of the Stephen Minister is um, I ha started to have some health issues. Uh, one of the problems is I started to go to the doctor and they started to uh, find things like cancer. Kind of out of the blue, uh, they discovered that I had male breast cancer. You know, then you hear words like stage four, incurable. Um, and that really, really threw me for a loop. It threw my wife for a loop. Um, but we were in a deep, dark uh, hole. Uh, it's probably the second time in my life that I felt uh, this utter despair uh, and utter hopelessness uh, in, in uh, life. But a big uh, ingredient in helping me out of that hole was uh, I was assigned to Stephen Minister, uh, somebody I had not met before, but the nicest person in the world. Uh, they come into your life, or he came into my life, uh, not judging, uh, not with a lot of, you should do this, you should do that, but walking with me uh, through my despair and trying to get out of that, praying for me, 
uh, helping me pray as well, uh, and just caring for me, showing me uh, in the flesh what God's love looks like. And I just really am thankful to Him. I am thankful to the ministry as well. Hi, my name is Mike Dapkus, and I wanted to talk to you today about uh, Renovate 16, specifically the um, Youth Center. Uh, we started this project back in May, and it came to fruition after many years of praying. And um, finally, in God's timing, He decided it was time to renovate the Youth Center. And at that point, it was like He put us on a uh, starting line and said, Go. So we, um, we have a new member here who took this project and led it from a project management standpoint, and He um, got the thing rolling. We, um, had great help from the church. The volunteers were everywhere. When I asked for people, they came out. Um, people with kids, people without kids. So we um, we got the youth center going by doing a lot of demo and a lot of moving around. We had two months essentially to do it, and that included demo and all the construction. We had to work around some of the summer schedules as well, and just had to be ready for seeds of faith and for. Um, for the youth to start coming in and worshiping again. And the kids absolutely love it. Um, I've heard from several people that they were praying during the entire process um, for the project to be done, to be done safely, and, to, and to, to be a place where they can come and worship and praise and fellowship. So it has, it's been a terrific experience, and I'm so glad that we did it, and everything has come together. And like I said before, it was all in God's timing. Well, hello. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Good. You're good? What's your name? Rexy. Rexy? How old are you? Three years old. Wow. What's your favorite thing to do? Um, play songs. Let's go to the first. Playing with golden birds? I love golden birds. You love golden birds? Yeah? Yeah. 